All right, lenses. Now, lenses is one thing that I see people get confused about. So let's see if we can figure this out. What is a lens, first of all? Lenses, objects that cause rays of light to converge through refraction. Now we have two main types of lens. I'm gonna show you the main one first, and it's a convex lens. And I'm going to draw a dotted line through the center, and that is what we call the principal axis. And it's just sort of like a normal that is at 90 degrees to the lens itself. If we have a ray of light that's going along the principal axis, it's going to hit the lens at 90 degrees and so therefore it's just going to carry on on its merry way all the way through. It is slowing down as it's in the lens but it's not changing direction. What about this ray here then if it's coming in and hitting it there? Because we have the curve of the block it's getting refracted once and then again as it enters and exits and it ends up going out in that direction. What about a ray down here? Well, it's the opposite, it gets refracted as it goes in, refracted as it goes out, and then we end up with this convergence happening, the light rays meeting all at the same point. Now, this is a convex lens. What about a concave lens? Well, it looks like this. There's our principal axis again. And again, if I have a light ray, going along the principal axis, just goes straight through. However, if I have a light ray that goes down here, it gets refracted in the opposite direction to which it did for a convex lens, and so it actually ends up going out like that. But ah, you might be thinking, these rays are not converging at all. They're actually spreading out, they're diverging. And yes, you're right, but we'll talk about that in a second. Let's just look at this convex lens first. As you can see, we have light rays entering parallel into the ray and they're all meeting at this point here. Let's say that this lens was in a camera. Where do you want to put your film or your sensor in order to get a nice clear image? You would want to put it where the light rays meet. That means that whatever this light is coming from, maybe it's the sun let's say, we can form an image of the sun here because all the light rays are meeting. And so we say that convex lenses, they produce an image that can be projected. And we can also say that therefore it's a real image. It's also inverted. It ends up upside down. And we'll talk about why that is later on. Here on the other hand, with the concave lens, where are the light rays meeting? Well, technically, if we take these light rays back, if we extrapolate them back, yes, they do meet all at the same point here. But of course, that's behind the lens. So naturally, that means that you can't put your film or your sensor here because that's where the light is coming from. Concave lenses are good for making an image bigger before being refocused with a convex lens. So we say they produce an image that cannot be projected, and therefore we say that it is a virtual image. Must be used with a convex lens if you want to produce an image. So if you have an actual projector or a camera, you'll find that you have a combination of convex and concave lenses working all together to make sure that the image is being made bigger maybe by the concave lens, but then it's being focused right at the end with a nice convex lens onto the sensor. So that's all you need to know about concave lenses. We're going to leave that for now and just concentrate on convex lenses because they're far more useful. So let's draw our lens again like that. And I'm going to again draw my principal axis. Gonna be a bit neater this time. Now earlier I drew the light refracting as it enters and exits the lens. But to keep things simple, what we do is just draw a dotted line right the way through the center of the lens and we just say, well, let's just pretend that the light is just refracting on this line. And so we treat a lens as if it's just infinitely thin and we call this the lens axis. And earlier on, I drew light rays that were going in parallel to the lens. So I'm gonna draw those again. And we said, what happens? They all meet at the same point. So that's the clever thing about lenses. And so we call this point here, where all of the rays meet, the principal focus. And we said that that's where rays meet if entering parallel. And we can say to axis, 
that is the principal axis. So where is this light coming from? Is it coming from, say, the head of a person who's a few feet away? Well, no, that can't be true because the light that comes from somebody's head is going out in all directions. So if there's a lens here, that means that the light will actually be spreading out. Where is the object that this light is coming from? Well, it's coming from an object far away. If an object is very, very far away, then that means that the light is going to be coming from it into the lens basically parallel. So we can say at infinity. And I can prove this to you with one of my lenses here. On this focus ring here, it tells you how close the object you're focused on is. So if you have a look, I'm at 0.45 meters there, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and then it goes 0 0.7, 1, 1 1.5, 3, and then straight to infinity. When my lens is at infinity, that means that it's set up to take the rays from something that's infinitely far away. Now, every lens you have is different, and some lenses will tell you how many times zoom it has, but if you buy a lens like this, it will actually give a distance on it. This one says 50 millimeters. This is what we call the focal length of a lens. What does that mean? It means that when the lens is set up to accept light rays from something infinitely far away, let's say the sun or something like that, this distance here is 50 millimeters. This is what we call the focal length and you can buy lenses with all kinds of different focal lengths. Now we can put the principal focus on the other side of the lens as well, right here, and that comes in handy for our next bit. Now in reality, you'll never really be focused on something that's infinitely far away, just near infinitely far away. However, what happens if you do want to focus on somebody who is just a few feet away? What's gonna happen in that case? Let's have a look. So I've got my lens again, and I'm going to put my principal focus on there. Like I said, mine is 50 millimeters away from the lens. So let's have an object. Let's have our little chappy right there. Now we want to know what happens to the light from this person's forehead, right at the top of his head there. Now, what we're going to do is draw a ray diagram. And this can tell you a lot about how a lens works. So we're picking this point here. Now we're concerned with two, maybe three rays of light that are coming from this guy's head. Number one, we're concerned with the ray of light that is entering the lens parallel to the principal axis. What did we say earlier about rays that go parallel into a lens? Well, we know that they're going to hit the principal axis at the principal focus here. So there we go, that's my first ray. The next ray that we have to draw is one that goes straight through center of the lens. Now, in reality, if we have a ray that's going from his forehead into the lens, it's gonna get refracted as it enters, but then it's gonna get refracted the same amount as it leaves. So we can just say, well, instead of drawing that little kink in there, we can just draw a line that goes straight across. We can see that our rays have converged at this point here. Now, there is one more ray that you can draw as well, just to check that all of these rays are going to meet there. Now, at GCSE, you should probably draw this. At A-level, not so important. Ray through this principal focus, then exits parallel. It's almost like the mirror image of this ray here. It's going in parallel, but then it's going through the principal axis on the other side, so like that and it's gonna meet at this point here. Again, all of the rays meet here. So we had our object over here. I know we shouldn't objectify people, but this is one time where we have to. So the person is the object here, and we have the image is formed over here. However, look at this. The light comes from the head, but it ends up below the principal axis. So that means that the head ends up underneath here, so our image is inverted. If you took the light rays from the person's hand, they'd all meet here. If you took the light rays from the person's foot, they'd all meet here. But in order to know what's going on with an object, we just take the top of the object and see where the light rays end up. Sometimes you might see an arrow just like this, and you'll be asked to predict where the image is gonna be formed, and so you're gonna take the top of the arrow like that, you're going to draw the rays, and you'll end up with the arrow down here. 
So what does this tell us? Well, do you remember earlier me saying that when we have a convex lens, yes, you can project the image, so that means that it's real, but it's also inverted. This is why it's inverted. This is what happens in your eye, by the way. If you're looking at somebody, this is the image that forms on your retina at the back of your eye. But your brain's clever and it flips the image upside down automatically so you just perceive it as the right way up. Now, earlier on, we said that if something's infinitely far away, we want the film or the sensor in a camera to be at the principal focus here, at the focal length. However, what if we're focusing on something that is closer? Well, we wouldn't want the sensor here now, would we? Because the light rays aren't meeting there. We would want to put film or the sensor here. When you saw me turning the dial on the lens earlier, all that it was doing was changing this distance between the lens and the sensor to make sure that the light rays from your object, which is one meter, three meters, infinite meters far away, they all meet at the sensor. So you get a nice crisp image that's in focus, not a blurry image. Now we can use a ray diagram to calculate magnification. Magnification is just how many times bigger the image is compared to the object. And so is equal to image height divided by object height. I can see that my image height is 2.6, so 2.6 centimeters away from the principal axis, the guy's forehead is, but the object, well, in reality, it was 2.2 centimeters away from the principal axis. Very short guy. So 2.6 divided by 2.2, and that gives me 1.18. So my magnification of this lens is 1.18. That means that whatever image you have is gonna be 1.18 times bigger than the object itself. If the number is less than one, that means that you're making the image smaller. And in reality, if this was for my camera, the object is going to be quite big, but the image is gonna be tiny on the film or the sensor, so we end up with a number much less than one. Now, just one more thing. This is also equal to image distance over object distance. It's the same ratio. So just to check, I can see that my image distance, well, that's 11.4 centimeters from the center of the lens, 11.4 divided by how far is my person away? I can see that that's 9.7. Look at that, that ends up being 1.18 again. So this is true. Now that's really all you need to know for GCSE. For A-level, there's way more math that we can do with this. So let's have a look. The first thing you need to know is power. Power of a lens, no, it's nothing to do with work done or energy this time. This is equal to one divided by the focal length of a lens. But in order for this to work, we need it to be in meters. So what was the focal length on my lens? Well, it was 50 millimeters. So in meters, so it's gonna be 0 0.05, so one divided by that. So the power of my lens is 20. But what is the unit of that? Well, it's capital D, and this stands for diopters. And it makes sense if you have a thicker lens, then that means that the focal length is gonna be shorter. The principal focus is gonna be closer to the lens. Shorter focal length means that the power increases. We also have the lens formula, and this is one that gets used a lot. And you don't need to know how to derive this, you just need to know how to use it. One over the focal length, so that's one over F, is equal to one over the object distance plus one over the image distance. So if you can measure two of three of these things, you can figure out the third. And the magnification equation, which we can rewrite as magnification big M equals V over U. You might realize that I got those the wrong way around the first time, where V is the image distance and U is the object distance. But don't forget that you can swap these for the heights of the object and the image as well. Now what if you're dealing with objects that are so far away, like stars, that it's not that useful to talk about image heights or distances either. Rather, let's think about a star that's here, and here is your eye right here. So you're looking up at this star, and what happens? Well, you can look at the star directly like that. And if we imagine that there's a big circle, a big circle going around you where the edge is at the star, what we can do is say that we have an angle right here, and we can call that alpha. 
and that's going to be a tiny angle. It's probably going to be less than a degree. It might be an arc minute, which is a 60th of a degree, or an arc second, a 60th of a 60th of a degree. In other words, one 3,600th of a degree. What about if you used a telescope to see it though? So here's your big telescope and here's the star again. However, this time, the light is getting magnified as it goes into your eye. So actually what you see is this angle here this time, this angle we call beta. So we can say that magnification is also equal to beta or beta divided by alpha, where alpha is the angle subtended. That's a posh word that we can use by the naked eye or the unaided eye, and then angle subtended by the image to I, so that's the image from the telescope. That's the angle that appears to be covered by the star once you look through the telescope. But wait, there's more. In a telescope, usually you have two or more lenses. Here's a star over here, and in your telescope, usually what you have is an objective lens, and finally at the end, you have an eyepiece lens. And what's weird is that in this case, the magnification is equal to the focal length of the objective lens divided by the focal length of the eyepiece lens. So one, two, three, and a fourth way of calculating magnification. And last but not least, because you have the light entering the objective lens basically parallel and you want it to come out basically parallel into your eye, you need to make sure that these light rays just cross over like that. So what do we need to make sure of? We need to make sure that these lenses are a distance apart, which is equal to the focal length of the objective lens plus the focal length of the eyepiece lens. That and that. If you found that helpful, then leave a like. If you want to go on to the next astrophysics video, then click the card and I'll see you there.